Whenever you think about the potential of a football team getting better, does it ever cross your mind to where you're like, you know what? No, 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 no. That's too much. You know, no, 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 no. We already said we don't need to add more. We, we're good. We, we, we shouldn't get even better than we already are. Does that ever cross your mind? Because if it does, it's okay. But I'm here to talk to you about why you should forget that thinking. You should always look for ways to improve. You should always look for ways to get better. And that's even a personal thing. You don't ever want to feel personally like, oh, you know, no, 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 no. I'm good enough. No, 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 no. I'm set with how I am. I don't need any improvements. Because think about that. That's not a really healthy way of thinking, in my opinion. We should always be looking for ways to improve ourselves. But it also translates to our favorite football team. But I couldn't explain it to you myself. I mean, I could, but it'd be more fun if I brought on a very special guest to help me explain it that much further. Yeah, this feels like a dream. All right, so team, keep it clean. Very special guest in the building, my guy KO, uh, Kevin Allstriker from Locked On Raven. Let me stop talking. Let me let you introduce yourself. Uh, so everybody, even though they know who you are already, frequent guest to the show, but introduce yourself to everybody. Yeah, I appreciate you and Graven for having me on. I am Kevin Allstriker. I'm the host and producer over at Locked On Ravens, also managing editor for Ravens Wire. So, you know, Locked On Ravens, we do daily Ravens content five days per week. Ravens Wire, we write content seven days per week. So, definite Ravens content oriented guy over here. And look, it's exciting. Lamar signed. They've got a <laughs> bunch of weapons around him now with Odell, Zay Flowers, obviously Rashad Bateman, and those guys. Can't forget about Mark Andrews. But I know there's a lot of conversation about the potential another addition of that room, which I think could take him over the top. Yeah, it sure could. And that would be very, very lovely. But um, before we get into that, let them know where they can find you at as far as Twitter, YouTube, all that good stuff. Yeah, for sure. So you can find me over on Twitter at ChaosStriker34, also Locked On Ravens. You can find anywhere you get your podcasts. So Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and audio form. Also in video form on YouTube. You can subscribe to that channel over there. Then Ravens Wire is... is you know, we write over there seven days per week. That link's in my Twitter bio, so you can find me over there also. Cool, man. Appreciate it. And just to make it easier for everybody, I have all that stuff linked down below in the description. Now, um, a title of yours that you just talked about, you said you're a producer. I, I didn't know that. Well, so shout out to you for producing. Appreciate um, it, yeah. Now, production is important. Uh, production is something that is necessary, especially in a uh, production-based company. Uh, and we know the NFL is exactly that. Um, and we know nowadays the NFL, it is a passing league. It's about putting up points. It's about scoring. That's what the NFL wants. They want teams to put up points. And nine times out of ten, uh, your team will be put in more primetime games based off of the offense, not the defense. So with that being said, the Ravens. Um, there's been a lot of talk on if there's a such thing as too much talent to add uh, to the Ravens, especially specifically on offense, uh, especially with the, with the conversation centered around DeAndre Hopkins. And we'll see where he ends up going. Maybe even by the time you see this video, his decision will have already have been made. Hopefully he will be with Baltimore, but we'll see. But do you think like there's a such thing as having too much talent uh, when it comes to offense or even defense? But Let's start with offense. No, I, I don't think so. I mean, we know in Graven, this is a physical game. Football, people get injured every single season. No team comes out of any NFL season unscathed. People get injured. People go on IR. And look, I mean, we can take an example like recently from last season even where the Ravens trusted their young guys. They went with mm -hmm. Rashad Bateman as a number one. Devin DuVernay as a number two. On paper, you looked at it and you said, well, if Bateman goes down, the whole room is kind of sunk. If both Bateman and DuVernay go down, mm -hmm. they – well, it's pretty much a point in no return at that point. And unfortunately, the worst case scenario happened where both those guys went down and they relied on, you know, Demarcus Robinson as their number one guy. Who I, I do give credit to Demarcus Robinson for, you know, showing up. But right. again, you want him more as your fourth guy, not necessarily a number one. 
Then it was Deshaun Jackson and Sammy Watkins and James Prochet. And that's just in this league with the way the league is turning to be, you know, this high flying, throwing on everything. You need to have more guys than that, especially in the event that someone goes down. So what do the Ravens do? They go out, they sign Odell Beckham, they sign Nelson Aguilar, they draft Zay Flowers. Just that and all, even with not even factoring in DeAndre Hopkins in this situation, whether he comes to Baltimore or not, Mm -hmm. you know, some people I've seen said, you know, the room is too deep. They can add someone at like corner or edge. You can trade Devin Duvernay away and maybe get somebody there. I've seen that take a couple times. To me, my whole thing is there are a lot of what ifs with this room. I think they've definitely constructed the top 10 unit. Now, Mm -hmm. a lot of that does hinge on health. Odo Beckham Jr. We know is coming off that torn ACL in the Super Bowl in 2021. Didn't play last season. Rashad Bateman has had two injury. Well, you know, for him, he had a season ending injury last season and then also got injured during his rookie year. So can you rely on those two guys to play each a full 17 game season? I wouldn't necessarily bet on it. Could they? Sure. And it could be great. But if those guys have to miss a couple games, if they get dinged up here or there, if there's a multi-week, multi-month thing, you're not in the situation where you have to bring back Sammy Watkins for a third go round at this point, or bring in what would be a 37 year old Deshaun Jackson. <laughs> Devin Duvernay is your number four option behind Zay Flowers or Shaw Bateman, Odo Beckham is a lot better option than having him as your number two. And I'm not saying Devin Duvernay is not talented because we saw mm-hmm. it. Right. I think the, the, the gripe with Duvernay is that I think the fact that his contract his cap hit is inflated because of the pro bowls that he's made. And so that's been an issue, but to me, I think he's a talented player. And to me, no, I don't think you can have too many weapons. I think for Deandre Hopkins, if we're just having that quick conversation, he's still one of the best wide receivers in this league. Right. So to have him in there, if a guy goes down, would you rather have Devin Duvernay step up or would you rather have DeAndre Hopkins there for insurance? I think DeAndre Hopkins is a pretty good insurance policy in my opinion, and obviously would be the number one receiver on that team. So to me, long story short, the answer is no, I don't think there are too many weapons for sure. Yeah, man, because somebody, uh, I forgot who it was and where it was, but they, they phrased it like, if you had a million dollars, do you not want another million dollars? Uh, is that too much money to have? Uh, do you not want to add to it? I was thinking like, oh, yeah, what a great, simple explanation, um, because why not? Who wouldn't want more? Um, so with what the Ravens have right now, it's great. It's, it's, it's looking good. But like you talked about, um, the health, the health is a really, really big concern. And I know for me personally, it's not one that I've been thinking about enough um, because I've just been so excited by thinking about the potential on what these guys can do. But it is something that is a realistic concern because, uh, like you mentioned, Odell Beckham Jr., he, he hasn't played since the Super Bowl two years ago. He, he missed last, last season. Uh, with Rashad Bateman, um, he, the last game we saw him in, I believe, was the Bucks game on Thursday Night Football last year in uh, late October. Um, we hadn't seen him. He hadn't played since. And he really didn't even really play in that game much. Um, so for the Ravens, uh, they are putting a lot more uh, into those guys. They are uh, sort of putting their eggs into those baskets. But at the same time, they did draft as a flowers. So we expect him to have a significant role. They brought in Nelson Aguilar, like you mentioned. And then, yeah, there's De- Devin DuVernay as well. And for now, still James Prochet and Tylen Wallace. You got some undrafted guys that they brought in too. Uh, so they certainly have their options. Um, but one thing that I've been thinking about, especially with the Baltimore Ravens, Um, I think when it comes to the offense, it's almost like when you hear people say, oh, that's too much. It would be too much. Um, I think it's sort of a a Ravens thing because for years, the Ravens, I mean, they're, they've known, they're known as a defensive franchise. Now, obviously when you got guys like Ray Lewis and Ed Reed and whatnot, and then, I mean, the list goes on, we could be here forever talking about all the star defensive players that they've had. Um, that's what they were built on. They were built on defense, having an amazing defense, and the offense was like, oh, okay, whatever. But the defense, they got it done. But now, with this sort of shift, I, I think a lot of people in their minds, they just may not have been prepared for that shift because we've seen a lot of times when Ravens, they'll have a good defense, but then they'll add more. They'll add another player. They add another corner, another linebacker, another safety, another pass rush, another edge guy, another defensive lineman. They'll add another something. And people will be like, oh, yeah, we got it. Let's go. You never hear about, oh, no, that's too much on defense. But for offense, 
that's when that that too much conversation uh that's where, where it really gets started for a lot of people so hopefully uh this can be a nice change in the right direction of actually not being too much it being just enough uh now me uh one thing uh one one thing that i learned a while back um at an at an old job that i had is where we got paid a base salary but we also got a bonus for sales but i, I had an issue to where i wasn't getting my commission for the sales um i don't know what was going on but there was a couple of weeks where i didn't get commission for the sales so talk to my manager talk to supervisor people in charge and whatnot they were like all right you know what since you didn't get paid for it, that was a mistake on our end. We're going to give you retroactive pay. And that's where they pay you for everything that you miss. And then you get everything moving forward, too. That's what I think the Ravens should do for Lamar Jackson. Give him retroactive pay when it comes to the wide receiver talent in that room. Uh, because those first five years were really four and change. Because I can't really count the first year because that was still Joe Flacco's team. But Lamar Jackson, first four years and change. Uh, they they could have done a lot better uh, in the wide receiver room form. Uh, but this year, it has been a lot better. And um, if you add more, whether it's DeAndre Hopkins or if it's somebody else, maybe if you want to dip into the, the, the Bucks wide receiver. The wide, but anyway, whoever it may be, if they do decide to go that route, um, I would love to see them sort of give Lamar Jackson that, that back pay for everything that he missed out on. Um, now, how, how are you feeling about this wide receiver unit compared to years past? Oh, I, I think by far this is the best group Lamar has ever had by a wide stretch. And this is a guy, again, who won MVP in 2019 with guys like Seth Roberts, Willie Sneed, obviously Marquise Brown was on that team. But again, no disrespect to those guys, but right. you have so much more depth this year. And you made a great point when you were talking about the fact that, like, look, let, let's talk about the trade deadline last year. Everybody wanted a Brandon Cooks. Everybody wanted a wide receiver. You know, they were talking about all that. And I thought that would have been a fine move for him. I was on the Brandon Cooks train for sure. But they bring in Roquan Smith, who was inside linebacker, the biggest need on the team. I don't think it was. You know, Patrick Queen was playing the way he was playing. But Roquan Smith was a luxury addition for them who made the defense better. For DeAndre Hopkins, and again, we're not necessarily talking about him on the team right now because he's not. But if you brought in DeAndre Hopkins, it'd be kind of, mm -hmm. I don't think it's the exact same situation, but it's kind of similar where yeah, it's a it luxury is. situation. It would make the whole offense better. You have Odell, you have Rashad Bateman, you have Zay Flowers. So even if they don't bring in a DeAndre Hopkins, with those three, Odell, Rashad Bateman, and Zay Flowers, they are all, sim they're similar in the way, like they're all great route runners, very savvy. They, you know, many ankles will be left on the field at MZ Bank Stadium this year. The, the, the <laughs> defensive backs will be grasping at air. I'm excited to see what those guys do. But you have the ability now to be, we saw Rashad Bateman really do wreak havoc in the deep passing game, especially early on last season mm -hmm. against the Jets and obviously yeah. took a slant well, like 70, 80 yards to the house against the Dolphins, however long that touchdown was. Maybe it was 50, but he turned on the afterburners there. Zay mm -hmm. Flowers is a three-level player, short, intermediate, and deep game. And the fact that you can play him both in the slot and on the outside, I'd probably more lean towards the slot, but you can put him on the outside if you need to. And then Odell's another player. It's the Ravens and the whole NFL, honestly, is going to this like positionless type deal. It's more defense. Like we talk about positionless defense. The Ravens are doing it. You know, Kyle Hamilton, right. obviously Trenton Simpson is someone who kind of fits that mold yeah. too. But on the offensive side of the ball, you don't necessarily have to pigeonhole these players into, well, they can mm. only play in the slot. They can only play outside. Mark Andrews, we see get put in the slot, is a tight end. We see these, we even saw it with Patrick Ricard last year, which I hope you do not see this. <laughs> but regardless, it's this, it's a situation where the Ravens now. You mentioned, you know, are there too many weapons? This is where the depth comes into play, where if Beckham has to miss three games and Bateman has to miss, I don't know, four, let's just put those numbers out there. Devin Duvernay can step up, and then you have Odell, Zay Flowers, and Devin Duvernay, or Nelson Aguilar. And then if Bateman has to miss some time, that's what you have. If Odell has to miss some time, it's Rashad Bateman, Zay Flowers, Duvernay, Aguilar. So this group, to me, I like the fact that, one, there is talent there. Like, these guys are mm -hmm. talented players. Mm -hmm. But, two, that they now have the options, as we've talked about, where it's not just, well, Bateman goes down, you got to go out there and sign a veteran, or you got to rely on an unproven rookie. You, stuff would have to go extremely catastrophically wrong health-wise for the Ravens to be in the situation they were last year. Mm -hmm. it, it only took a little bit last year. We, we knew that, too, going in, where if Bateman went down, that was pretty much it. If Duvernay went down, it was definitely over, and both did. So to <laughs> me, this group, 
is, I think, the best by a pretty wide margin, the best group Lamar Jackson has had to throw the football to wide receiver wise. Mm-hmm. And then factoring in Mark Andrews, factoring in Isaiah Likely. And I think the run game has been pretty forgotten about here, honestly, because again, I don't think we're going to see as much of it this season with the way that the personnel is. Mm-hmm. And even going back to, you know, signing Odell, signing Zay Flowers, or drafting Zay Flowers and signing Nelson Aguilar, it just makes more sense with Todd Monk and then it did with Greg Roman. We knew that offense was a tight end centric pass offense. Right. Receivers weren't getting targets. And it was never a Lamar issue. I think of why receivers weren't coming to the Ravens. It was the fact that they knew that if you go to a Kansas city, if you go to an Arizona, if you go to a Buffalo, you go to a Philly, you're going to get more targets there as opposed mm-hmm. to a Baltimore. So now with Todd Monk and in with the offense shifting, mm-hmm. I think receivers are more confident in the Lamar thing. is just a cherry on top. Cause I think players do want to play with him. We literally heard Deandre Hopkins say it in these other guys as well. So I'm excited for what Lamar can do with this wide receiver group. Yeah, man, it should be really, really fun. I like, man, I, uh, I get excited for every Raven season. I mean, it's football. We love it, but, this season, just thinking about the the potential that they have in the passing game, just not even just wide receiver, but the passing game because I got to throw Mark Andrews in there too, the passing game and throwing the running backs too. The passing game can be a beautiful thing, and we saw the the thing about that that makes it even more promising too. We saw glimpses of it uh, with Greg Roman. We actually, we, we did. And even you brought up last year, early on, before Rashad Bateman went down, before Devin Duvernay went down, we saw glimpses of a nice passing game under Greg Roman. So just imagine even more focus and energy being put into the development of the passing game. And like you mentioned, too, with better weapons, more quality weapons, uh, and just more quality depth. It just makes the, the it makes their worst wide receiver, the worst pass catcher, that much better. So anyway, KO, I, I appreciate you coming on as always. One more time before we get out of here, let everybody know where they can find you at. Yeah, I appreciate you having me on. You can find me again over on Twitter at Chaos Trekker 34 I also host and produce the Lockdown Ravens podcast. So five days a week, we do Ravens content. So you can find me over on YouTube. You can subscribe to that channel. Also subscribe for free in audio form. So again, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, wherever. I also write for the Ravens Wires. You can find my written content over there. Appreciate it, man. Thank you for coming on, team. Keep it clean. Make sure you go check out all his stuff, both Locked On, Ravens, and Ravens Wire. Appreciate you, KO team. Keep it clean. We out.